It's Game On. Presented by Spectrum Sports. And a very pleasant good afternoon from the Stan Sheriff Center in Manoa. Come on in. Because tonight, it is the Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic Championship match as the Rainbow Wahine play host to number 13, Washington. And this is Game On, presented by Spectrum Sports for Rainbow Wahine Volleyball. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Scott Robbs, Lisa Stranmaa, and back again, it is Ryan Kalei. Suzy, once again, want to thank Dave Shoji for filling in the last couple of nights. All right, Hawaii comes in 2-0. UW comes in 2-0. Let's see how these two teams got to this championship match of the Classic on a Friday night. Washington easily over St. John's in three. Hawaii had a battle back, taking it in five over number 21, San Diego. Again, Washington with the win yesterday, uh, fairly easily over San Diego, though they could have gone five, they went four. And then Hawaii again with another thrilling, nearly three-hour marathon coming back from behind to beat St. John's in five. Hashtag what? Time now for Hashtag what? Brought to you by First Hawaiian Bank. And uh, well, we're only two matches into the season and it's been pretty interesting. Lisa, your hashtag for the Rainbow Wahina, your thoughts? Well, you've used the word already, Scott. I'd have to go with the hashtag battle. This team knows how to battle. They've got heart and they have had their backs up against the wall and somehow they have persevered. They have battled back from being down 2-1 both nights in a row. And tonight they are fighting for the championship, if you will, hashtag battle. And my hashtag is hashtag Cardiac Cakey 2.0. Cardiac Cakey was the name of a team back in 2004. It was a team that was comprised mostly of underclassmen. That team was known for going to four and five sets almost every single night and every match. It was a team that eventually ascended to the number one ranking in the national polls. And this team reminds me a lot of that team. They have a lot of heart. They obviously have gone five in the first two matches and we could be looking at Cardiac Keiki 2.0. Yeah, let's hope so. Because as you mentioned, that team was number one in the country for a little while. All right. We have a lot of new faces, obviously, on this Rainbow Wahine team. Who's kind of stood out to you so far, Lisa? Well, obviously the freshmen have all come in and made immediate impacts, but the one kind of the undersung hero in my mind right now is Riley Wagner out of Dublin, Ohio. I think she has just done a fabulous job. A little bit of a sleeper, if you will. You don't truly notice all the little things that she does. She swings away here in the replay, but her passing and her defense and a couple of solo blocks her volleyball IQ is pretty phenomenal. She, to me, has been a real sleeper, but a keeper. Yeah, my player, you know, I do agree with Lisa that all of these freshmen and newcomers have really been a significant part of the team. My, the player that I feel uh, has really shown a lot of potential is Hana Helvig. She is really impressive with her quality of her arm swing. And you look at her uh, blocking ability. She's a big size at the net. And sometimes it's hard to imagine that she's only a freshman. I think the upside and potential of this young lady uh, is going to be very great for this team. She could be a marquee player that in a few years, once she's in the weight room, once she's able to really adjust to college life, she could be an All-American, no doubt. I, I thought the first two nights, even though they both went five, were completely different types of matches. I think many folks probably thought after Friday that last night would be a cakewalk in three over St. John's, but we got to keep in mind, a lot of freshmen and a lot of new faces still learning how to play with one another. And a different lineup, right? They're going with this sort of this unconventional four-hitter systems. We did see uh, Rika come in as a libero in, po at, in points last night, uh, but this is a team that's still getting used to a different personnel, as well as the teams that are having to play Hawaii. This is a very unconventional sort of lineup, and it's not just the hitters, it's the passing formations, it's the uh, routes that they're hitting, so I think all of that is factoring in to them sort of getting adjusted, not only to the personalities, but to the system as well. Your thoughts on Hawaii going without a libero pretty much so far? Well, it's weird. I mean, they they went without, but actually they went with. They right. switched back. And so the lineups, I think the coaching staff has done a phenomenal job. They know their personnel so well. They've made the changes when necessary. And Rico Okina has come in and done some great things. Kyra Ka Wahini has done a fabulous job as well. They've been called on late, but they've come in and they've performed. You know, you would have thought that Robin would have taken it easy on her girls. Nine of the 16 players are new. 
not the case. You look at the non-conference schedule, of course, Friday against number 21, San Diego, last night against a 23-win team a year ago in St. John's. Tonight, number 13, Washington. Next Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, Army, Sac State, and Denver. You've got West Virginia coming here. Of course, UCLA. And then they're going to go to Waco, Texas, and play Missouri and Baylor. So it's a very challenging non-conference uh, schedule for the Rainbow Wahine. We asked some of the team members what their expectations are. What we expect out of, out of us is to just play hard and never come complacent and to just continue to learn and try to get to the top. And I know Coach Rob definitely emphasizes that on us. I mean, there are, there are going to be days where we take some dips down but we talk about that and we try to keep the dips to a minimal so that we're still like going up. I just want everyone to be able to live up to their greatest potential and really get all they can out of what they're able to give and I just want everyone on the team to know that like they have a role and they're important and what they have to give will feed into our end goals and our championship goals and I think we're moving towards that direction and Robin is trying to push us towards that direction and I don't think we're there yet but I think we have everything that it takes to get there. Well we've already seen this the schedule challenge the Rainbow Wahine the first two nights. I don't know if you guys agree or disagree but I think probably the first three weeks we're going to see a lot of ups and downs with this team just because they got to learn how to get together and play as one but by the time they figure it out look out. Yeah, and I think as well, you look at the personnel and the depth of this bench. Like last night, Brooke Van Ziggler didn't necessarily have the outing that she had the first night. Luckily, Kirsten Sively came in with some clutch swings, so I think the depth of this team and the personnel that they have are all going to be contributing factors to see how far this team can go and how well they can progress in this preseason. I think one of the big things when you're doing the preseason is you're going back to back to back nights in a row. You've got to consider the fatigue factor. There's a lot of emotional factors. There's a lot of new players. There's so many uh, distractions, if you will. So this team has really, they played 13 players last night. They do have a lot of depth and playing a ranked team is definitely going to inspire them tonight. What are your guys' expectations for this team? How good do you think they can be? I think this is a team that can be very good. I think that this uh, is a team that is probably better than the past two seasons that we've seen. Uh, they do have a lot of depth. I think that th this will be a big challenge to see how they stack up against a Pac-12 team that is ranked in the top 25, how they're able to compete when tested. Tonight will be a big test. Yeah. And they just beat San Diego, which, you know, Robin Amo always talks about the numbers really don't matter, but San Diego was ranked 21, so Hawaii didn't get in that top 25. So that in itself says a lot. It gives them a lot of confidence as well. Well, I know two guys that always exceed expectation. They're going to be calling tonight's match. Let's throw it over to Kanoa and Chris. Guys? Thanks a lot, Scott. Yeah, Kanoa Leahy here sitting next to Chris McLaughlin. And uh, C-Mac, this is going to be an interesting match because this is Washington. Big, bad Washington. They've been on a roll under head coach Keegan Cook. In fact, they won just 20 matches last year, which was a low in the Keegan Cook era. And yet they still made it to the Sweet 16. Yeah, they're just solid all the way around. They're deep. They're tall. They're big. You know, one of the things they do well, too, is they serve. He takes pride in, in the way he's coached their serving up. And, and uh, when I talked to him the other day, he said, if I were to name one thing we do well, well watch out for our serve. Because we hit it in location, and we hit it hard. As always seems to be the case, they're also a big team up front. They have Kara Bajima, who is one of the top players in the Pac-12 conference. There will be some familiarity, though, interestingly enough, because of all the Oregon and Utah Division I Pac-12 transfers for Hawaii. You have Bailey Choi, you have the three Oregon transfers. So this is going to feel a little familiar for them, even though the surroundings will be different. Yeah, it'll be like another Pac-12 contest That's for them. Right. And they, they know the players, and, and uh, hopefully they'll be, be able to get a read on some of those players, what their hitting tendencies are, especially, and be able to pick up some of their stuff in the back row and line up proper, uh, line up on them properly in the front row for blocking. But it'll make a big difference, I think. Yeah, Bailey Choi, uh, the transfer from Utah, three years started there for the Utes, said that she's looking forward to this, that uh, they've been through some battles in her Utah days with Washington, uh, and this is a match that she truly wants. The question is, and the corner crew touched on it, how much is left in the tank 
for this Rainbow Wahine squad. They have played what amounts to an entire match more than Washington this weekend, right? They've played 10 sets compared to seven for the Huskies. So three more sets, that's an entire match in some cases. What do they have left, do you think, C-Mac? Well, that's a great question. You know, Renee Shigemura has really been put to the test, the trainer, trying to get these girls back in shape with the uh, compresses, the ice baths, the rollouts and the roller, the foam roller and all that stuff. She's done the best she can to get them ready. But I'll tell you what, both nights, Joey Rasmussen, who hit a ton of balls both mm -hmm. nights, walked off with cramps. Not a good sign. No, no. Uh, hopefully she hydrated all day, all night last night, because she's a pretty important component to the success of this team. Uh, and, you know, Brooke Van Sickle didn't have as good an outing as, as uh, Ryan Suji alluded to at night number two as she did on night number one. Was that a little bit of fatigue as well? We, we shall see. It's one of my keys to the game tonight, by the way, is, is there any gas left in the tank? Hey, don't give it away. You, you don't give it. It's a showbiz. You got to tease that stuff. Don't give it away just yet. Uh, we will be looking forward to that, though, when the match begins. It is a true championship final here in this opening weekend. Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic. One of these teams will notch their first loss of this 2019 season at the end of the night. We'll have first serve for you. Let's send it back over to the corner crew. All right, thanks a lot, guys. When we return, we're going to focus on outside hitter Jolie Rasmussen, but get the greatest plays, hardest hits, and schedule info by following Spec Sports High on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And welcome back inside the Stan Sheriff Center, celebrating his 25th season of action inside here. Of course, the Rainbow Wahine played the very first uh, sporting event against San Jose State back in 1994. Tonight, though, they're taking on number 13 on Washington. And one of the players who I will have to count on is the junior transfer from Oregon, Jolie Rasmussen. There you see what she did at Oregon two seasons ago. Hit 225, 2.47 kills per set. But for Jolie, you know, it just didn't feel right in Eugene. But Hawaii, that's her happy place. It feels right. It feels like a good decision. And it's like every little thing outside of volleyball that I have issues with, like it just never seems to dampen how much I love being here and how eager I am to show up to practice every day. And it's just, it's like an exciting time. Like everything is new and it's something you want to fight for. And I feel like the girls also are behind me. And it's just this whole collective willpower towards our end goal and it just it feels really good being able to be there for my team like I feel like I haven't been able to be there for my past team when I was at Oregon I feel like I was not part of the team and I wasn't able to contribute what I wanted to so now I just want to be able to give all that I have to give and just if it's talking or going for balls or being a leader or being a mentor or being off the court on the court like no matter what like I just want to be able to fully give and not be held back or limited in any way. All right, time now for a little fun. It's Over Under, brought to you by Bank of Hawaii. Well, Jolie has led Hawaii the last two nights in kills, but let's talk about the hitting percentage. Over under 250 for hitting percentage tonight, Ryan. I think she's going under, and that's not a slight to saying that she won't have success in the kills department. I think that she's going to have to take a lot more attempts in terms of when she has to face this big Washington block and this defense. So I think while she may have the same number of kills and she may lead the team in kills, I just don't know that percentage is going to be able to eclipse 250. I think she'll be more at about a lower 200s, uh, or maybe even high 100, 190 uh, against a team like Washington. And I'm going to have to say that I think that she's going to go over. Now, I don't know if she's going to go over 250 by 251 or up to 300. The first night out, she had a 390 hitting percentage. Last night was at 250. And I think the set distribution, she did see most of the sets or a high percentage of them. But I do feel that how can you not get fired up for playing this team? And I think she's the kind of player that no matter what, she's going to go all out. You know, she's a player that had an injury, hasn't played a lot of volleyball in the last couple of years. Any concern about fatigue and also the fact we saw on Friday night, I mean, she even said she was cramping up a bit. 
Yeah, you know, I think, uh, like Lisa said, adrenaline is going to play a large part in this. And also the fact that she maybe is familiar with some of the personnel coming from the Pac-12. Bailey Choi is another one, but uh, this is a player that has played this team before, familiar with some of the players on the other side of the net. There could be an extra level of competition that kind of helps her to move into another gear. Yeah, I think the block, Washington's block is huge, but she's also a very smart player. Last night she did look a little fatigued as well, but again, I think the adrenaline, the adrenaline is going to outweigh the fatigue. What do you expect from her? Does she need to hit 250 or better for Hawaii to win tonight? Not necessarily. I no? don't think that she needs that. I think they need to be able to put away kills. I think the hitting percentage is a nice thing, but I think more importantly, Hawaii has got to have distribution from other players. They can't rely on Jolie to be able to be that player that hits 300 every night and puts 20 plus kills on the scoreboard. They're getting points from other areas. It's not necessarily comes down to the hitting percentage. Yeah, and that's a good thing with this Hawaii team, at least what we've seen. They're pretty deep. They have more than one option. Something maybe you couldn't have said the last couple of years. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll break down the matchup, Hawaii and UW. Let's take a walk inside the H zone, located on the concourse inside the Stan Sheriff Center. Fans buying up their gear, getting ready up for this championship match of the Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic, Hawaii and Washington. And we're two matches in. Let's take a look at uh, who's led the way for the University of Hawaii. Taking a look, of course, we talked about Rasmussen just moments ago on that hitting percentage. Well, we'll see where that tracks throughout the match. And Hana Helbig, you can see there, hitting 307, a high number for a freshman, 2.80 kills per game. And I think the X Factor tonight will be Van Sickle, a player who had sort of a quiet night last night, but really exploded onto the Terraflex on Friday night. We'll see how she comes out. You see her numbers so far in this tournament. Let's take a look at the stat comparisons. Keep in mind, like Kanoa mentioned, Hawaii basically has played an extra match, 10 sets to seven sets, but relatively uh, equal. Well, definitely close, and we talked about Washington having a tough serve, but look at the aces there. Hawaii out in front, but with more errors. There's always risk versus the air when you go for the serve. And then, of course, for uh, the University of Washington, who won in three on Friday and in four last night, they're led by that young lady on the left side, Bajima. She is the real deal. Well, yeah. she's All-American last year, puts up great numbers, very strong. Uh, Shannon Crenshaw as well plays a six rotation and Samantha Dreschel, all of those, these players are their go-to players. They are big and very, very strong. So it should be a good matchup, should be a lot of fun. You know, one thing we've seen the first two nights and you saw there in the stat comparisons, Hawaii's been out dug the first two nights and Washington has a, a, a pretty sizable advantage statistically in the digs category. Is that something that concerns you at all? Because when you thought of Hawaii volleyball, you always thought about the scrappy defense, but not playing a lot without a libero, you're not seeing as many digs. Yeah, I don't think that's necessarily equates to points. I mean, Diggs allows you a chance to run transition. You want point scores. You want people that are going to put points on the board, be it through blocks and be it through hits. And I think Hawaii's block has looked extremely well in this first two uh, games, and that's going to be, have to be a key. Hawaii's block is going to have to be better than their defense. And uh, UW has an incredible libero in Shane McPherson. She's amazing. She's a senior. She's started every single match since she was a freshman, played a ton of beach. And I'll tell you what, this young lady is spectacular. If you want to see a true libero, this is it. You know, one thing Hawaii has over UW tonight, they have faced adversity the first two nights. Maybe we'll see how UW has to deal with it if Hawaii can put adversity on them. That's what we're all looking forward to. Should be fun. It's a championship match of the Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic. Lisa, Ryan, and I will be back when this one's pal. But coming up next, the anthem, Hawaii Ponui, Kanoa, and Chris will call the action from inside the Stan Sheriff Center here in Manoa. Enjoy, everybody. Up next, the true championship match of the tourney between the two unbeatens, 13th ranked Washington and the Hawaii Rainbow Wahine. And with that, we welcome you inside the Stan Sheriff Center. Kanoa Leahy alongside Chris McLaughlin. C-Mac, take us through the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Well, I've got a little bit of car theme tonight, Kanoa. For the Huskies, it's speeding tickets. If they had the, the serving gun out, they'd have the fastest serves in the tournament. They are tough knuckleballers. Keegan Cook says it's the best part of their game. And for Hawaii, is there any gas left in their tank? 
They might need some fresh arms and legs before the night's over, especially watch for that Sickle and Rasmussen. Those two have really expended a lot of energy the last two nights. So here we go, a true championship finale here in this Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic. Bailey Choi will get things started with the serve. Back row set goes to Kara Bajima. She's blocked by Skylar Williams. And it'll be a free ball here for Hawaii. See if they can break the ice first. But they end up returning a free ball. So UW on the attack, but a good sniff out there by Choi on the dump shot by LMA Powell. Here's Riley Wagner down the line and in. We got a net violation against UW. Either way you slice it, it's an opening point for the Lady Bows. The Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Bit of a different rotation to start this match for Hawaii C-Mac. Yeah, some sloppy, some sloppy play right there for sure. Start, start off with both sides looked a little confused. Well, Skylar Williams wasn't confused there. She was up and ready on that Shannon Crenshaw swing. The denial with Wagner jumping up next to her, and Hawaii up 2 0. Skyler played four sets on the first night, played only one set last night, but still got the starting nod tonight. I guess Robin Amo knew something we didn't know about her block. Yeah, block looked good. Here's Wagner getting another swing, the touch, diving save there, and then the high ball here to Bajima. Williams got a piece, so Wagner looks to center it, and then Helvig will just send a free ball the way of the Huskies. They go slide. This is Lauren Sanders, and she's able to work it and get UW off of the schneid here in the first set. The Huskies coming in 2-0. They've played seven sets so far, a sweep of victory over St. John's on night one of the tournament. And then last night, a four-set victory, hard-fought battle as it was. 29-27 in the fourth. That could have gone five very easily. That's right, a win over San Diego as Joey Rasmussen is able to uncoil and put Hawaii up two here early on. Keegan Cook in his fifth season atop the program. Two Pac-12 championships already on his resume as head coach. Two Elite Eight appearances. Last year was considered by many to be kind of a down year for Washington. They won only 20 matches. That's a low under Cook. They still made it to the Sweet 16, but right now they find themselves down here as Julie Rasmussen follows up her offensive attack with a little D right there. Her blocking's been so solid the last two nights. A pleasant surprise for Robin Amo. Here's Badgham, a big swing down the line and in. She is awfully good. A 6'2 senior from Linden, Washington. Had 23 kills, hit 370 against USD last night. I'll tell you, if they ever need to stop the bleeding on Washington's side of the net, just go to Badgham. She'll fix it. She's just with the doctor ordering. Good look there at Robin Amo on the other side for Hawaii as Williams gets the kill. And the Rainbow Wahine is showing some freshness here despite having played what amounts to an entire match more than UW here this weekend. And Nelson looks especially fresh. Sky Williams, who only played one set last night. Good point. So five serving two. Back row set, and that is Drexel, Samantha Drexel, one of the heaviest hitters that we have seen this weekend. 6'4 junior from Woodenville, Washington, a transfer from Maryland. She's a Washington girl who went away for a year and got homesick, came back and went back to where her heart really was. Here's Brooke Van Sickle, first swing, trying to slice it to the opposite side and goes a little wide there. So the Huskies now within a point here, four serving five. That was an avoidance attack, Kanoa. She just trying to avoid those four hands that were way up above the net on her. Yeah, big block on the other side of the net here for Washington. Choi goes back row. This is Rasmussen, three blockers up. Crenshaw got a piece, and it is returned. Great effort there by the Huskies. Williams in the middle, diving save there by the libero, Shane McPherson. Choi sniffs out the dink shot. So bump set here from Wagner to Van Sickle off the high hands. Middle set, the touch by A.V. Nice finds the floor. And we're tied up at five. I asked Jason Mansfield, the assistant coach for University of Washington, who used to work at Stanford, went to several Final Fours with them. He said, we need to win the long rallies tonight and take the crowd out of it. They did it just then. Some great effort in keeping that one alive over the course of the sequence. And they'll get a free ball here from Hawaii. They go outside. 
And Badjama caught it fat. So Hawaii back in front here, six serving five. The Rainbow Wahine off to a 2 0 start for the first time since 2015. First time, of course, under head coach Robin Amo, but it was hard fought each and every night previously. Two five set victories, and that's been kind of a norm here for Robin Amo, as you see one of the freshmen, Amber Igidi, into the match along with senior setter Noreen Yosia. In fact, now 17 five-set matches over the last two-plus seasons for Hawaii. You'll see it went away for a jump serve then. And the kill. She just did a little standing throw, keep the ball in play, and challenge this UW offense. Jolie Rasmussen, her parents in the house. They were just there. Dean and Deanna. Some great volleyball in that family for sure. Good touch on the block there by Hawaii. Backside, you'll see it goes to Van Sickle. Now that is a big old block on the other side. You have six foot Amy Neese and six four Samantha Drexel shutting the door. And that's a big block right there. Five nine Van Sickle, even though she plays big, that was a tough block to go up against. She's gonna chisel the edges. Algidia is blocked back by Nice. So Huskies will play it on their side. Nice kind of paint brushed it there. So Hawaii on the attack. Here's Hana Helvig up against that back line. And Helvig, of all the freshmen, may have been the one the last two nights that has been most eye popping. No, no question about it. It really shows that she's had over 30 international matches that she's played on the Swedish junior or senior national team. It really shows. And 13 kills on night one, 15 last night in the five segment over St. John's. Big swing there, Drexel. Told you that she hits the heavy ball. <laughs> Can you tell the sound of her swing? When she contacts the ball just a little bit different, a little different. than everybody else in the gym. Yeah, it almost sounds like an Aaron Judge crack of the bat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In and back to serve is Emma Kelly. 5'11 junior sends it long. And Hawaii up a deuce here, nine serving seven. But Robin Amo was convinced that because this was such a big opponent, such a big match here in the opening weekend, a true championship finale here in this tournament, that her players were going to be up for it. And they certainly appeared to be here at the onset. Drexel passed the double block, popped up by Van Sickle. So you'll see it, and it's set a little in front of the line. Helvig just knuckles it over. The swing on the second touch by Lauren Sanders. Little improv there. And the 6'4 junior from Snohomish, Washington, is able to get it down. She doesn't make many hitting mistakes, I'll tell you. She's hitting around 400 for this tournament with shots like that. Does a nice job of keeping the ball in play, minimizing her errors. But another out serve here for Washington. That's their second service error of this opening frame. 10-8 in favor of the Rainbow Wahine, and again, employing a somewhat unorthodox system. Setters and middles subbing for each other. No libero out on the floor, although we did see Rico Okino in some key stretches in that match, especially late in the match last night as the libero position. Van Sickle sets up Wagner, two blockers up, and she goes hard angle. What a shot. I think she could see that the Washington was taking her line away from her, because her first contact tonight was a rip down the line, so they took her line away, and she just says, okay, thank you very much, I'll go cross court. Great swing. Robin Amo says Wagner's volleyball IQ, especially for a freshman, is off the charts. That set was off the mark. And the swing goes wide, and that's another point for Hawaii. They're up four. Shannon Crenshaw trying to cut it. Largest lead of this first set here for the Lady Bows. 12 serving eight. They go slide, and this is Sanders. Dug up back over the net. It'll be played. Back row, it's Badjama off Williams and down. Tonight are going to be treated with some tremendous defense on both sides. And you see a play like that by McPherson. She's one terrific libero. 
started every match for four years. Williams, well, it wasn't textbook. The one-handed set there by Choi. Williams didn't get it flush, but it was a perfect placement. I think it was, I think it was a little paintbrush, wasn't it? It was a paintbrush. A bit. Yeah. He was pinning a little bit, and it worked. Sky off to a good start. Just a quick coat. <laughs> Wagner with the serve. Powell outside, Bajima blasts it through the block. Kara Bajima, who really blossomed into another level of elite player last season. She was pretty much a one-trick type of hitter prior to last season when she made the transition into being a six-rotation player, and she has absolutely relished that role. She just, she has just taken off in a dominant, dominant player. In fact, last time she was standing short of center, she was a middle blocker. And we got a net violation on what should have been a freebie for A.B. East, but instead, it's a point for the Rainbow Wahine. 14 serving 10 here in the first. A.B. East has a nice job of pounding that overpass down. He's followed through a little bit too much. High outside set, Bajama good up there by Wagner. Here's Helvig over the double block, two hand save McPherson. Back row, that's Drexel, dug up by Choi. So Wagner bump sets Van Sickle off the block. Hawaii will keep you with it. They go outside, Hana off the fingertips of the block. The dump shot sniffed out by Wagner. Hawaii still in the attack, here's Helvig. Diving save in the back row to no avail. Hawaii up a handful and they get to 15 first. Good start for the home team. Come back tonight's Jack Vax. Early challenges, Hawaii facing two ranked opponents in their first three matches. San Diego 21st ranked coming into this weekend. And across the net tonight, UW number 13. The Bulls scheduled to face three ranked opponents their next 24 matches. That would be Baylor among them in a tournament hosted in Waco, Texas. September 22nd is when they'll go up against Baylor. And then also Cal Poly in the Big West Conference twice. Bajima able to stay with it off of that first ricochet. Showing some quick bounce back up off the floor. And Sky getting a kick it out. She was laughing at herself there. Ron Amo actually laughed back with her because it was kind of a whiff. It was funny. I see Robin loosening up a little bit there and enjoying the fun with her players. Choi goes middle, Williams. Popped up there by McPherson. And it's going to be a free ball coming here for Hawaii. Can they cash it in? Choi, high and away. Helvig with a solo blocker against her, but a good up there by McPherson. Another free chance here for Hawaii. This time, again, it's Helvig. Blocked up. William pushes it deep and down. Where did that come from? Where is that in the shot book? That came out up and nowhere. Showing some court vision. Sky Williams, the 6'1 junior from Bellflower, California. Started six of 16 matches last season. You see her numbers. She's sort of in and out of the lineup. And here she is. She's been a regular starter here this opening weekend. Good serve by Yosia forcing the overpass. Oh, the back row set. Wagner was in front of Rasmussen. And a double hit call against Rasmussen. So things just got a little cluttered for Hawaii, and they give a point away. And there was some cluttering going on, and the passing's a little bit too tight to the net right now. Bajima with the serve. Good pass there by Van Sickle. Helvig, two blockers up. She goes off the block and out. So Hannah Helvig, third kill on nine swings, still error free. And Hawaii up a handful, 17. Serving 12. They're hitting 269 in this opening frame, C Mac, compared to 167 for the Huskies. Middle set. And that one bounces off the floor. AV Meese logs another one. Had seven kills at 400 in the win versus San Diego last night. Played for the U.S. Collegiate National Team in the offseason alongside her teammate Cara Bajima. And of course, also on the scene was head coach Keegan Cook. That's right, and he's also a late starter, but didn't start playing until she was in ninth grade. Serve goes long by Calais. And it is 18 serving 13. So what has presented itself in this opening set 
is a golden opportunity for Hawaii to build up some positivity early on in this match. Helvig goes long, though, on her serve. But you got to close the deal against a very tough, in fact, always tough Washington Husky squad. And you saw that Helvig really went after that serve. Hawaii knows they've got to serve tough against this Washington team. Back row said it's Helvig. Got under it. Was there a touch? They will say there was a touch, and this may be challenged by Keegan Cook. It's a point for Hawaii, as it's currently called. And at this moment, no signal from head coach Keegan Cook as to any kind of challenge. Let's see if we can tell on our replay. Right there. On Lauren Sanders. So the point will stand. It's 19 serving 14. Choi with the serve. Pass tight to the net. And a good ad lib there by the setter, Ella May Powell, six foot sophomore from Fayetteville, Arkansas. She is just one of the great setters that college volleyball has to offer this season. One of the volleyball magazines had her as one of the top 10 underclassmen. It's all the freshmen and sophomores in the country. One of the top 10 to watch this year. She certainly is a good one. Gatorade Player of the Year in Arkansas. Pac-12 all-freshman team selection a season ago. Choi high and away. Rasmussen blasted off the high hands. Great save there by Crenshaw. And then the swing by Bajima. Gets Washington another point, And here they are within three. What a nice transition Badger made from going from being a middle attacker to being an outside heavy hitter. She's got all the angles. The largest lead for Hawaii was five. Here's Rasmussen. That was a laser beam. Ooh, they were taking Rasmussen's cross court. She did not have much line to work with, but maybe a volleyball whip right there on the sideline, and she used it. Hammering it right down the line. What a shot. Well, three players on the floor for Hawaii are familiar with being across the net from Washington. As that swing on the slide by Sanders goes wide, you have Brooke Van Sickle and Jolie Rasmussen, the transfers from Oregon. Bailey Choi, the transfer from Utah, all from the Pac-12. Right now feeling comfy up five. Welcome back. Get the greatest plays, hardest hits, and schedule info by following Spec Sports High. That's Spec Sports High on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Strong start here for the Rainbow Wahine. Up five against the 13th ranked team in the country. Wagner with the serve, just gets over the net. Here's Bajima, dug up over the net by Helvig. That would nearly scrape the scoreboard above. Here's Bajima again, blocked and roofed. Sky Williams saying, ah, ole. Sky Williams in on her third block of the night. She's on fire. She's also got three kills, no errors, hitting 600. What a play. And Hawaii up a half dozen. Served by Wagner into the twine, though. This is where the points can start getting a little difficult, right? The last few pushing the ball across the goal line, so to speak. In, in the 20s, they're all difficult. Served by McPherson. And that forces the overpass. Huskies on the attack. Here's Bajima blocked and roof. This time it's Jolie Rasmussen putting her fingerprints on it. I've been so impressed with Rasmussen's blocking the last three nights. She's just very disciplined. She rarely makes an error, reaching over too far or hitting the cable. 23 serving 17. Overpass jousted the net. Van Sickle pops it up. Toy able to save it. And Rasmussen sends it across. Great effort by Hawaii. The slide goes to Nice. Hawaii scrambles again and returns. Not letting the ball hit the ground. Bajima, that will not be returned. Put a little extra pepper on it. Typical of the Stan Sheriff crowd, even though Hawaii loses the rally, they get applause anyway. Bajima kill number six. Crowd turning up the volume. Here's Helvig, blocked and roofed. 
Good combo of blockers there. Nice and Drexel strike again. Set a little bit low. Helvig needs it up high. She's got that high wrist snap, high arm extension. She needs the ball, I think, a little bit higher. Choi goes back row. Here's Rasmussen unleashes, but a great dig there by Powell. The bump, though, goes over the net. And then Williams stuffed solo style by Nice. Oh, the possibilities for Hawaii on that sequence. But they weren't able to take advantage. A 3-0 run by Washington forces the timeout by Robin Amo. So the Huskies not going quietly here in this first frame, C-Mac. No, they're, they're, uh, they're taking the punches from Hawaii pretty well right now. And they've bounced back these last couple of plays. I think Sky Williams, if she were to have that play over again, she would see that there's a blocker directly in front of her. Almost a 50-50 ball. Better off to just step back, pass it up. Kind of like Amber Igidi did last night when she made a real smart play there in the fifth set and just passed it up and ran a play. But uh, she'll learn. Sky will learn. She's a, she's a really good learner. And uh, there's a pretty veteran team. All those people back from last year. You know, Washington having the luxury of having six starters back from last year. There's a smart team. Yeah, six starters plus the libero, but there is absolutely no argument who the go-to player offensively for this Husky team is going to be this season, and that's Cara Bajima. She already has 10 more attempts than the next closest Husky. Yeah. Six kills hitting a buck 88. What the digging by both teams. Shane McPherson with five digs. How about Benny Choi with six digs so far? Hawaii. Hawaii being led right now by Hana Helvig, four kills. Skyler Williams, Jolie Rasmussen, three kills apiece. So 20 serving 23. Can Hawaii get these last two very stingy points? What a statement that would be just to show the wherewithal to be able to take an opening set off of this Washington squad. Pass by Rasmussen. Choi goes high and away. Helvig cross court and in. Net violation against UW. It's a Loha ball in the first. I think the key to that play right there was Ronnie Wagner's pass right on the money. And now Bailey Choi to run a little bit of an offense. And here's Hawaii's arguably best server back in the box. Three aces this weekend for Noreen Yosia. Passed by Badgema on the money outside. It's Drexel, but the door is closed. Van Sickle next to Igidi. And how about that? Hawaii strikes first against the 13th ranked team in the nation. 25-20 in set number one. And the block party making an appearance in that first frame. But we got a lot of volleyball to go. This presentation of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii and Hawaii Honda Dealers. Well, the Rainbow Wahine Roofing Company in the house in that first set, c -Mac. Skyler Williams in on four blocks. They got a total of five. Then you see Brooke Van Sickle and Amber Igini getting in on that one. And there you see Joey Rasmussen getting most of that one. It's been a block party to say the least. Hawaii out blocking, out digging 17 to 12. University of Washington out hitting 242 to 122. Washington hit over 300 for the weekend. And all of a sudden they're being out hit by Hawaii by over 100 points. That's a little bit of a shocker. Just their second dropped set of this opening weekend. Speaking of shockers, how surprised are you? The big question coming into this match, how much would be in the Rainbow Wahine tank? The uh, legs look fresh, don't you think? And the arms look fresh. In that first set, for sure. <laughs> they sure did. Question becomes, can they continue to play yeah. at that pace? And at that level of effectiveness, new player in for Washington here to start this second set. It's Claire Hoffman, 6'2 sophomore from Pleasant Hill, Oregon. Didn't play until the 20th match of the season last year, but started every match thereafter. So factored heavily. She's coming in for Shannon Crenshaw, who's 
off to a slow start. As she's had a good weekend, but getting negative so far. Zero kills, and two errors. That's why Crenshaw is getting the nod here. So Bajima with the serve here to start set number two. Back row set, Rasmussen, three blockers up. She somehow punched it through. The crowd wants a double hit. They play on. Igidi gets the point anyway. Well, Igidi did a nice job there of saving that set. That set was too low. Rather than try to hammer it, she probably would have hit it out, but instead she took a little bit off, kept it in play, and got the friendly roll. Amber Igidi out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, from St. Michael the Archangel. Middle set, the dink by Nice. Good job by Hawaii to pop it up. And then Helvig with the full swing. McPherson the save. Right side, it's Drexel. Blocked out of touch. Here's Helvig again. I tell you what, that arm swing seems so smooth and effortless each and every time. Yeah, she's, she's really technically very sound. She also has great peripheral vision. She saw the block taking her line away, so she went cross court. Smart move. 2-0 Hawaii here in the second. Here is Hoffman and gets the point for you, Dub. You mentioned some of the struggles for Washington a season ago. Suffered a five-match losing streak and then a three-match losing streak, all in Pac-12 play. And there were some who were sort of writing Washington off. And all they did once they got to the tournament was make it to the Sweet 16 until they ran into Penn State, but it was their 17th straight NCAA tournament appearance. As that serve goes into the twine. Ever since Jim McLaughlin got that program rolling about 15 years ago, it's, uh, it's done nothing but exude quality year in and year out. So three serving one, here's Helvey. Pass by McPherson. High ball goes to Hoffman. And a couple of really strong and assertive swings by Claire Hoffman since being inserted into the match. And she got Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Week last year. She didn't even play, like you said, until her 20th That's match. Right. So she's got some offensive power for sure. Pass tight to the net, the one-hand set to IGD. Sniffed out, so the back row goes to Bajima, but a little missed time, so Hawaii now with the advantage. Back set, Van Sickle to Rasmussen, the roll shot. Dug up by Hoffman. Bajima from the back row, blocked and rolled. Rasmussen next to Igidi had her number. Smart move by Rasmussen to sneak in and help out Igidi. Put up a four-hand uh, four, four block as opposed to just Igidi by herself. Nice help by Jolie. So making now six total team blocks for Hawaii. Jolie Rasmussen, you know, speaking of what would be left in the tank, she was physically spent on each of the previous two nights because of those five setters. Absolutely. One, one night, uh, she very definitely had cramps. The, on the second night, last night, she was really not feeling well at all. Her legs really hurting. And Hoffman, another put down that one against the end line, but Robin Amo, I think, considering a challenge here, but well, maybe changing her mind at the last minute. Might be thinking this is a match you want to save those challenges. Rasmussen up over the block, diving save there, though, by Hoffman. And Vagina sends a freebie Hawaii's way. Can they take advantage? Williams played off the net and returned. Oh, that may have been an out ball played by Helby. Set to Rasmussen, too low, she two hands it over. So now the Huskies with the advantage. Bajima off the fingertips of the block. Helvig the save against the back line. Gets the set in the back row. Sends it long, no touch. And it's a point for UW, they draw even. Well, each, each team had their chances in that rally. Both of them got to be frustrated a little bit, but it was a sharper rally. Played off the net there by Choi, two handed over by Rasmussen, and it drops to the Terraflex. Whatever works. Whatever it takes is a pass by Van Sickle into the net. Boy, getting very lucky on that play, to say the least. And that's now four kills for Rasmussen hitting 273. 
Bajima sends it long. Is there a touch? No touch. Point for Hawaii. And they're up two. So what do you make of what we're seeing on the Washington side of the net so far in this match, C-Mac? Some uncharacteristic forced, unforced errors. And then Hawaii's taking advantage of those. Good play off of the block. Ricochet by Rasmussen gets the set on the outside. And that one lines up by where we're sitting. Off of the block and out for another Hawaii point. Almost every time that Washington gives Hawaii a chance, gives them a little opening, Hawaii takes advantage. That's the biggest difference. 19 kills on 41 swings on night one against USD. 18 kills on 46 swings last night for Rasmussen. And Hawaii continues to pour it on. That time, the play made by Brooke Van Sickle. 4-0 rainbow run. Finally, a short serve. I love that short serve that's on by Riley Wagner. I'm sure it was signaled from the bench, trying to bring the front row outside hitter up inside the three-meter line so they can't attack. Here's Bajima. Oh, she put an extra effort on that one. But the dig by Wagner. Helvig, though, three blockers up. And there was no opening. Nowhere to go for Hanna that time. So five serving eight. And it's McPherson sending it across. Choi, high and away. Van Sickle, the block. Works again for you, Doug. This time it was the center, LMA Powell, next to Nice. Sickle hitting negative 333 right now. One kill, three errors, six swings. Choi gets it back to her though. Tried to shove it down. Diving save McPherson. Hawaii will play it back. Backside, Rasmussen off the block and out. She is bringing the heavy thunder. No sign of fatigue by that young lady. She's been blocking, swinging away, digging the ball, moving nicely. The two-time All-Pac-12 honorable mention selection. She, Brooke Van Sickle, Kyra Hanawahine, they've been part of their share of battles with Washington in their time in that conference. The hit by McPherson. I make that Drexel goes long. And Hawaii up four. Another, what you can say, unforced hitting error for UW. Very uncharacteristic. Normally a very high percentage team. And that's an ace. Washington led it by, thought it was going long. It smacks up against that end line, and Hawaii up a handful. Timeout, Husky. Welcome back. Let's check out the first Hawaiian Bank top three. Hawaii single match service aces. You remember that one? Against UW, Amber Kaufman back in 2008. She had 11 service aces. The record still to this day. Just one service ace for Hawaii. In fact, just one service ace in this match, and it came just moments ago from Jolie Rasmussen. Here's Bajima from off the net. Return to sender. Williams next to Van Sickle. And that's now four straight points ripped off by the Rainbow Wahine. They're playing some pretty sharp volleyball right now, C-Mac. What say you? As I say that, Rasmussen serves it into the net. Is that a bocce there? No. Big time, big time. <laughs> That's on me. Sorry, folks. Yeah. Uh, but your thoughts on, on what we're seeing from the home team? Twice not making that many errors, and certainly not many self-inflicted ones. And, and University of Washington is making some very uncharacteristic unforced errors. Chase down on that second touch, though, and Van Sickle has to tap it over. Diving save to the net. Easy pickings for Sky Williams. Well, there's a great example of an unforced error. You know, from the University of Washington, a very good defensive team, good ball control. Their first contact normally is very solid. They usually pass the ball off the net, so they don't you know, overpass very often. All of a sudden, they've had a couple overpasses tonight. Yeah. Not like them. At least to this point, if you didn't know any better, you would think Washington was the team that played two five setters the previous nights. The pass to the 20 foot line. Drexel blocked and roofed. Amber Igidi turns it back. Hawaii 
right now with a seven blocks. They've got eight on the night. Fourteen serving seven. And McPherson had to lay out just to make the pass. Drexel diving save. You'll see a diving touch Van Sickle. Chance here for UW. Middle set. That's Nice. Sniffed out by Van Sickle. Bump set. Back row. Rasmussen. Roll shot is down. Everything Hawaii touches is turning to gold. And a happy Rasmussen family right there. They told me before the tournament, they said, you know what? We're going to be here all day, every day, because we're both like volleyball nerds. <laughs> we'll we'll watch every match, every point. And they're certainly enjoying watching their daughter play, that's for sure. Well, Dad Dean played at UC Santa Barbara and for the U.S. national team. Montana played at Pacific. They met by virtue of playing volleyball together. So yeah, I'd say volleyball nerds a good way to describe it. As Noreen Yosia deals an ace out of the deck. And Hawaii now on an 8-1 run. Timeout Huskies. The home team by nine in set two. Welcome back. Not a lot of people saw this coming. Hawaii up 16-7 on UW here in set two. Ryan Kalesuji has something for us on the Huskies. Yeah, thanks, Kanal. Well, on the sideline, the Husky coaching staff talking to their players, saying it's mostly, mostly about their side of the net, saying that they have got to get back to their style of playing, saying they're letting the emotions of Hawaii get to them. Their game plan also continue to attack, attack uh, Brooke Van Sickle on the serve receive. They will continue to keep serving her. Back over to you. Thanks, Ryan. Drexel tried to shove it past that block. Nothing doing. The second time, she took a full crack. But the block said, oh, no, you don't. Amber Igidi again. Well, the thing about Samantha Drexel, she hits a heavy ball. When she hits into the block, it comes back faster than it went over. See what Igidi has done at the net defensively in this tournament. Hawaii up a 10 spot here in set two. Overpass, Igidi the swing. Robin Amo said this prior to the match, c -Mac. She said, we are going to have to serve well against this big Washington team. we got to get them out of system. So far, so good in that regard. They've done nothing but get Washington out of system. Amazing. You'll see her again. And that's an ace. Unbelievable. The, the rain you'll see her gets on a run with her serve. She is nothing short of unstoppable. So difficult to pass. There she is again. Tried to go the other corner, missed it wide. That ends a 7-0 Hawaii run. And prior to that, the expanded stretch, Hawaii outscoring UW 11-1. They go Van Sickle. The old crossing pattern that we've seen repeatedly here this weekend. That was pretty smooth. Van Sickle so quick off her feet. Gets up before the Washington blocker could get up. It is 20 serving eight. The floater by Van Sickle. Right side, Drexel. And the block. Impenetrable again. This time it was Helvig next to IGD. Yeah. We got a sub here. There's Maria Bogomolova, 6'1 junior from St. Petersburg, Russia, comes in for Samantha Drexel. 21 serving eight. They go middle, that's Nice. And a much needed point here for the Huskies. Well, we are seeing something pretty special so far from this Rainbow Wahine squad. They have been passing the ball superbly. The block, it's just been hands across America <laughs> there from pin to pin. Yeah, they've got all three of those areas working. They're serving, they're serve receive, and they're blocked. One, two, three, that's been the story. Net violation called against the Huskies. That's a point for Hawaii. And right now for Washington, it's a puzzle that they have yet to solve. 
And they have not helped their cause much. A lot of self-inflicted wounds right, along so, the way. As Ryan Clay Susie just said, he listened to the last huddle, they said, Curls, it's not about them, it's about us. We're making the mistakes on our own side of the net. Right side, Logan Malova off the block and out. Played just one set previously this weekend, and that was on the first night against St. John's. She's been used mostly as a serving specialist, not as a right side attacker, but clearly she can be a good attacker. 6 1 from Russia. And you'll see it goes middle, Igidi. Missed it wide, and another point for Washington. Bogomolova, a pretty strong server, too, 19 aces last season. Didn't compete in 2017, though, due to a concussion suffered during fall practice. And that was coming off of a red shirt year to begin with in 2016. So a bit of a long time coming for her to get in on the action here for the Huskies. Here's Rasmus in the dink. Did that touch the floor? Yes, it did. Dixon Chun with the call there. He's the down official Wayne Lee, the R1 atop the ladder. Dean Tamora, Randy Rubinall. The two line judges, 23 serving 11. Rasmus a killed number eight, hitting 467 on the night. Helvey, seven kills. Kaylin Onasco, San Diego native now on the floor for you, Doug. Outside, and that is Hoffman just sort of slam dunking it down to the ground. You're you dub right now. You're just looking to build a little bit of momentum for set three, right? Yeah, if you're in Hawaii, you want to close out quickly to not give you dub the momentum. They're both playing opposite games right now. Choi goes high and away. Rasmussen. It's all working right now for the Lady Bows. Nine kills for Jolie. See what she did last night against St. John's. Had 19 kills, two solo stuffs on night one against San Diego. Hit 390 in that match. Aloha ball in the second for Hawaii. Bajima off the fingertips. Choi to Rasmussen. Through the block and down. And Hawaii dominates Washington in set number two. 25 to 12. And against all odds, after a long weekend, Hawaii will have a chance to crack open the broom closet. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, no, that's not a typo. Hawaii is up two sets to none. Let's take a look at the McDonald's match statistics. C-Mac, what do you think? Well, the real story of the night is look at the Washington hitting errors, 15 of them to Hawaii's nine. Look at the kill percentage. Hawaii hitting 305 to Washington's 062. This is a Washington team that's dominated everybody all week long. Hawaii struggled all week long to, to be 2-0. And look at the blocks, 10-5 for Hawaii. Diggs, 26-20. And aces to airs. Hawaii with three aces and no aces for Washington. Go figure. This is the 13th ranked team in the country. This is a Pac-12 powerhouse. And Hawaii struggled to beat them in the last 15 years. All of a sudden now tonight, where'd this come from, Kanoa? You know, this Hawaii team, this Hawaii program, hasn't had the healthiest of relationships with UW That's right. in recent years, right? In fact, the last decade, uh, the Washington Huskies knocked Hawaii out of the NCAA tournament, effectively ended their season in 2010, 2012, 2014. Yeah, yeah. And then won the last meeting as well uh, back in 2016 in this building in a five-set thriller. Uh, a win over Washington just by name just by title would be something significant. If they can close it out here under these circumstances and take advantage of this golden opportunity that's been presented to them, Huge. it will speak volumes about what can be for this Rainbow Wahine squad. Here's Yosia to Hana Helvig. Good diving save there by McPherson. Washington on the attack. It's Hoffman. She's dug up by Rasmussen. Wagoner flat-footed. Slaps it over. Middle set. The dink blocked back by IGD. Right side. Drexel. Denied. 
the No Roofing Company back in business. 11 blocks to five, doubling up on the Huskies in that department. So one serving zero. Hawaii has struck first in each set so far tonight. Well, we'll see us ends it long. Bring the stadium experience home with the University of Hawaii football on Spectrum Sports pay-per-view. Call 643-2337 to order your seven-game season package today. Rainbow Warrior football team off to a 1-0 start. Dramatic victory over Arizona. They got Oregon State coming up next week. The block was up on Hana Helvig. And that was Drexel back in the match and showing some positive body language here. 6-4 and 6-2 on the outside. That's a solid block. This represents the first lead of the match for the Huskies. Here's Rasmussen from the back row, just drills it through that proposed double block. So the question now, can Hawaii maintain the focus and that level of intensity that they clearly displayed through the first two sets? I'll tell you this, it was a short session between sets two and three, not the normal 10 minute, it was five minutes. That allows them to maybe keep that focus a little more. Well, the tough serving, such a key component to the game plan here tonight. Continued for Hawaii, but alas, Aijidi came into the net. So three serving two in favor of Washington, as opposed to Hawaii up 3-2. And that is an out serve. So we're even Stevens here at three apiece. Robin Amo in her third season atop the program. 2-0 for the first time. Got that win over 21st-ranked San Diego in the opener of this Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic. First win against a ranked non-conference opponent since Penn State in the NCAA tournament in 2015. That was in the regional semi. So they've accomplished a lot here this weekend. And they have, again, been presented with a chance to do something profoundly special here. But you'd imagine the Huskies will not go down without a fight. Igedi, though, able to find the floor. We're really trying to pick on Brooke Van Sickle, who struggled last night against St. John's. But tonight, Brooke has been pretty perfect in the passing department. So four serving four, here's Barely Choi. High ball set, Bajima, the touch, and nobody was there for Hawaii. Campfire point that time for UW. Communication breakdown there. Robin Amo would rather two people go for the ball than no people go for the ball. And that runs very counter to what we've seen from Hawaii so far in this championship match. Rasmussen against the double block. Good dig in the back row by Hoffman. Bajima. Off the block and down. I'll tell you what, Washington getting some really good contributions since the insertion of Claire Hoffman. And look out if Bajima starts getting more on track. She now has eight put downs, hitting 0 8 0. One hand set to Williams. Beautifully done by Bailey Choi. Well, Choi saved a sure overpass then. She might have gone, well, no, she got it just in time, right on top of the net. So five serving six, Wagner attacks Bajima there. Bajima will get the set on the outside, blocked out a piece, dug up by Helvig. Here's Rasmussen. And Washington, stout defensively. And it was Nice getting in on the action. Rasmus has got to swing hard at that one. That soft one into the block is not going to be effective. It's going to come back at you on the floor most of the time. Seven serving five. Choi goes high and away. Van Sickle came swooping in. But the dig again by Hoffman. Bajima from off the net sends it long. No touch. And another point for Hawaii. We'll give Washington credit. 
after getting pummeled in that second set. They have appeared to at least regain their footing a bit in set number three. Right side, Bajima off of one leg. Bajima hitting 0 0 0 there for a while. Now she's back up to, I think, nine kills, seven errors. She's just getting up there a little bit, but rare for her to commit seven errors like that. She's been their second highest kill percentage player this weekend. Yeah, now at 0 7 1, Choi has to chase down the set. Here's Helvig, two blockers up, and they get her again. So now it's the Washington block, as expected. That huge front line for the Huskies making an impact. And you see the frustration from Robin Almo. It's nine serving six here in set three. Ah, but the out serve, the sixth service error for the Huskies. See a, the lone returning starter for Hawaii in and back to serve. Middle said that's Nice dug up. Long run there for Yosia though, and she came under the net and across the line. So 10 serving seven here. Washington preseason pick to finish fourth in the Pac-12 conference. Defending national champ Stanford, once again the favorite. USC preseason pick second in Oregon, preseason third. Here's Rasmussen from the back row. Took something off, decided to pull the string, and it was effective. I think her attacks out of the back row are going to be really crucial for Hawaii this year. As long as they're chosen at the right time and place, I think she can really be a huge impact player there, hitting out of the back row. Here's Van Sickle. And that's an ace. Miscommunication there in that deep corner between and, Drexel and McPherson. And Van Sickle's had a really good knuckleball going there. That thing was moving a lot, taking advantage of the air conditioning winds here in the Stan Sheriff Center. Nine serving ten. Oh, that one sails long. Just continued to drift. Well, make the dream of education a reality for our student athletes. Visit hawaiiathletics.com and click on the donate button in the Ahahui Koa Nui Nui banner. Oh, Van Sickle unable to handle that serve. And so we're starting to see a little bit more of the reputation of Washington revealing itself. Tough serve, tough block. Timeout, Hawaii. Welcome back. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Heineken. 45 and 22. That's the number of ties and lead changes, respectively, in Hawaii's five-set victory over St. John's last night. A match that lasted nearly three hours. UW up by three here in the third, trailing two sets to none, though. You'll see a middle set, IGD able to get it down. It just sort of balanced on the shoulder of LMA Powell momentarily. But that statistic about the duration of last night's match, a reminder, and we may have a challenge here by Keegan Cook. He might be challenging a net violation. And so they're going to look at a possible net contact by Hawaii. But looking at that statistic, the duration of last night's match, it's a reminder. The longer this match goes, the more you start to speculate that maybe the advantage begins to shift over to the Huskies side. No, no question about it. And I think Amber Igedi, by the way, does come into contact with the cable right there. I don't think it was the ball. I think it was her hand, but we'll see. Yeah, the shorter the match tonight overall, the more advantage it is to Hawaii. The longer it goes, the more advantage it is to the Huskies. This is, is, does the ball make the cable move? Well, Amber's yeah, hand. It looks like it's her hand that comes into the tape. Yeah. 
That's actually a pretty clear angle right there. Yeah, they've, got to, they've got to keep her off the net because she has a tendency to follow through a little bit. Dixon Chun making the call and a quality challenge there by Keegan Cook, and that's big. Instead of a two-point difference, it's UW up four. Largest lead in this third set. Heck, largest lead in this match for the Huskies. You'll see it goes backside, healthy. And this is wide. I think struggling a bit tonight. That's her sixth error to go along with seven kills. Four straight points here ripped off by Washington. You'll see it goes back row to Rasmussen. She continues to unleash. Again, one of the reasons why Joey Rasmussen is able to attack out of the back row is that she's playing good defense and she's passing well. Again, you know about a system. Hoffman couldn't get all of it, so the save by Helvey. Here's Rasmussen. And she's able to punch it through the block. Rasmussen now with 14 kills. She leads everybody. And she's getting away with some, some great touches on the block on the other side that are just not coming back. Back row, Bajima. Wow, that was powerful. There's a badge of a bomb. <laughs> Tough to dig that one. Third team All-America selection last year was all Pac-12. As well, played with the U.S. Collegiate National Team over the summer. She is the real deal. I'm the mention All-American. Wagner dug up by Powell, the setter. So McPherson bump sets Badgema across court and in. The thin slice. And the Huskies by five. A great little wrist away shot. It's a sign of a great player when she can move the ball all over the court. Rasmussen tried to send it deep, covered by Hoffman. Here's Bajima again, roll shot, diving save, Rasmussen. And then Van Sickle sends it over. It's a pancake required to keep the sequence going. But then the bludgeoning by Bajima. One timeout left for Robin Amo. Or she can start using subs if she wants to slow the game down a little bit. And clearly the Washington servers are having their way right now, getting Hawaii out of system almost every time. Sign of a quality team, right? They're absolutely run off of the floor in the second set, 25-12. And here they are, having been able to turn the tide in this third set. And as we mentioned, the longer this match goes, the more difficult it will be for Hawaii when you consider all of the sets and time on the court they have logged already this weekend. Robin Amo challenging this play, by the way. Is she challenging whether the ball hit the floor? Ooh. That was Kaylin Onasco sliding the spatula underneath. That looks pretty good from that angle. That yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> that was a good good challenge though by Robin. I'm gonna get her troops to be gathered a little bit, save save a timeout. So she'll still have one timeout left in this set. Still, Dixon Chun taking a long look at this. That angle makes it look the yeah. most questionable, but I still think it looked like a legal save. And that is ultimately the call. So this UW team showing some grit here, C-Mac. You said earlier that they're not the kind of a team that's gonna lay down and give up. They're, they're fighters to the end, for sure. 
You'll see it goes high ball to Rasmussen. Dug up Powell and the dump shot gets it down. And so right now it's all working for the Huskies. 18 serving 11. That's now four straight points once again. Largest lead. And most of that lead has come from the Huskies block getting better and their service has been been getting better. Except for that one. Uh, out served with Hawaii. And is looking to make a move here in this third set. Now is the time. The original rotation to start this match on the floor here for the Rainbow Wahine. Bailey Choi to serve. First a bad pass. Here's Bajima. And it doesn't matter. Bad pass, high ball, the world knowing and anticipating that she's getting the set, and she still obliterates it. Bajma, the bailout. If you're in trouble and you need to bail out, just give it to Bajma. She'll come through. Diving pass there by Helvig Rasmussen. Well, she's been pretty reliable as well, I'd say. She's been, she's been steady. She's just doing it in a different way. She tends to use more off-speed shots as part of her repertoire. And uh, Bajma, the bomber, just keeps hammering away. It's hard and then harder. Guess where this one's going. Here she is, Bajima the dink, blocked back by Williams. Bajima again blocked back, but kept alive. Bajima a third time. Forget about it. Pretty disciplined Hawaii block there. Bajima's got some good swings in. Just a better Hawaii block. Pass there by Hoffman. Williams read the dump shot. Going sky high for the roof. Timeout taken by Washington. Hawaii is showing some light here in the third. Time now for the Akamai Roofing Report. 13, that's the number of total team blocks for Hawaii tonight. Out blocking Washington 13 to 8. And Skyler Williams getting a couple back to back prior to the timeout. 15 serving 19, Hawaii up two sets to none, and Wagner, the service error out of the timeout. We saw that in droves from the Rainbow Wahine last night. And that was, uh, they had a lot of momentum going there into the timeout, and all of a sudden then the, uh, the air gets popped out of the balloon to serve into the net. LMA Powell with the serve. And Hawaii way out of system here. Van Sickle sends it up for Wagner from the back row. But it works. Drexel tried to juggle it for a moment. So one of the advantages of having this five attacker system, no libero, is that people like Ronnie Wagner hit the, hit the ball out of the back row. Rasmussen gets it out of the back. Then Sickle gets it out of the back. And the other team just does not know which player is coming when. It makes it very difficult to defend. Here's Banjama. Oh, make that Drexel on the outside. And she's denied. Skyler Williams again. Sky on fire. Picks up her eighth block of the night. She's got one solo and seven assists. She's just been everywhere. And Hawaii within three. Largest lead of this third set was seven for the Huskies. Here's Bajima from the opposite side, dug up by Rasmussen. Choi goes high and away to Helvig. It hit the pin. And that's a point for UW. Helvig struggling a little bit more on her, with the block tonight. I noticed the first two nights she was hitting over blocks going OTT. Now she's trying to hit the edges of the blocks and she's uh, making a lot of errors. And that's not going to help from the Hawaii standpoint. An ace delivered by Kara Bajima. And Hawaii will use its final timeout. Trailing by five here in the third. Give a lot of credit to the Huskies. Keegan Cook and his crew able to pick themselves up off of the canvas after that second set where they had Hawaii pouring it on them 25 to 12. But here they are in position to extend this match. 
Kathy Muneno joins Lanai on the next Cooking Hawaiian Style tomorrow night at 7.30 on Spectrum OC16. She'll be making a fresh strawberry pie. Looking forward to that. Also want to give a shout out to a good buddy of ours, Billy Hull. We know him from the Honolulu Star Advertiser. Uh, Billy and his new bride, Kaylee, celebrating their recent wedding uh, and uh, having a party. And in true fashion, a very sports-oriented couple, they are streaming this match <laughs> at the celebration. <laughs> Sound up and everything, I'm told. So we just want to say aloha to them and congratulations. Let's send it over to Ryan Kalei Suji. Hey, thanks for now. Here on the Washington sideline, the coaching staff continue to track Hawaii's hitters. Uh, assistant coach Leslie Gaber, who is formerly Leslie Tuiyasu Sopo, a great player in her own right, actually has a large board that tracks Hawaii's hitters at all times, where they like to hit. She's relaying that information to their blockers. For the Hawaii sideline, Angelica Luke was talking to freshman uh, Hana uh, on the outside, talking to her about her shot selection and trying to keep her encouraged heading in to the ending part of this set. Back over to you. Thanks a lot, Ryan. 22 serving 17. And that's an ace by Badjama, back to back style. And Hawaii now trailing by six. So the Rainbow Wahine appear to be blinking here in this third set. Do you see this as something that is more related to? the mental side of things, or do you see some physical exertion starting to take its toll? I think, I think uh, Washington just flat out playing better. Good diving save there by Choi. So Williams sets up Helbig. And she goes beach style. Well, in her case, it could be snow style. That's right. Snow volleyball champion of Sweden. Yeah, I think I think the biggest difference has been Washington's serve has been is giving more problems to Hawaii's passers. Hawaii's been playing out of system most of this third set. Good pass there by Bajima. Outside, it's Hoffman. And that may have been the best decision Keegan Cook has made all evening it was getting Claire Hoffman in the match because since he has done so, she's been gangbusters. She has yet to make an error. Five kills, no errors, hitting 625. Also has seven digs, plays some great defense. Sianna Houghton with the serve. Aloha ball for the Huskies in the third. Amber Igini, though, lays the lumber. But a long uphill climb here for Hawaii if they want to get back in the mix here in set number three. Served by Van Sickle. Hoffman off the block, diving one hand save by Rasmussen. Helvig finds the floor. Picking up a little momentum. That's just about as important as anything right now for Hawaii. Exactly. Her confidence a little shaken because of Washington's dominance here pretty much in the third set. Well, things came somewhat easily for her the previous two nights. Hit 306 against San Diego, 308 last night against St. John's. Yeah, those are good numbers. And tonight struggling to stay above 100. Still a little ball for Washington. And they close the book on set number three. Lauren Sanders bounces it off of the floor. So no sweep to be enjoyed here on championship night. The Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic. We move on to the fourth after this. Welcome back. Take your internet with you. Spectrum internet customers get free unlimited access to over 4,000 Wi-Fi hotspots across the island. The Stan Sheriff Center is one of them. Well, Bajima's been bashing here as of late in this match. Remember when she was hovering, flatlining it from a hitting percentage standpoint? Well, she's at a buck 35 now, but 13 kills, and she was huge in that third set. Yeah, she really made a big, big difference in giving some momentum back to the Huskies. 13 kills, eight errors, a couple of service aces. She just does it all for the dogs. It's been a pretty fun duel to watch between Bajima and 
that woman right there, Jolie Rasmussen, who has 15 kills to lead everybody, hitting 481. That's a pretty high percentage, let me tell you. Outside hitters, you're, if you hit 300 on the night like a baseball player, that's a pretty good night. Yeah. If you hit 481, that's monster. So Hawaii won the first two sets tonight, 25-20 in the first, then ran away and hid in the second, 25-12. But credit Washington showing some guts, turning it around in the third, 25-20. Here we are, set four underway. And Riley Wagner with the swing from the right side, dug up. Now Drexel will take a stab at it. She's blocked. High ball bump set, Hoffman the swing. And it was initially called in and then called out by the line judge. Enough, I think, uncertainty and hesitation that Keegan Cook has grasped the replay challenge card. And he is going to challenge the in out call. Yes. I'm not sure he was talking about Dixon Chun about, but uh, in either case, it's going to be the in out challenge. He did ask his players, uh, what do you think? Was that in or out? And they didn't give him a definitive answer. That looks out from here. Replay over. I love how confident you have been via the replay challenges. That's out. That's not even yeah, close. That, that looks out. But you have really the, asserted yourself in this regard. <laughs> I, I like this. I like this new C Mac when it comes to the replay challenges. Yeah. I, they'd be playing by now. If I was referring, they'd be playing right now. They'd be serving. And we've always said, you know, Dixon Chun has to put the headset on. You already got a headset on. We can just kind of do this as a side gig. You Let's know what I mean? Put this over with. That's definitely out. Again, the ruling on the court was out. And so it's one of the old adages involved with any kind of instant replay system. You have to have conclusive evidence to be able to overturn a call. I'll tell you this, if, I'm gonna, if I've got three challenges on the night, I'm not going to use one of them at 1-0 in the fourth set. I'm, I'm going to use it for a critical time at 24-all, at 20-all, at a crucial call mid, in the mid-teens. But I think what happened there, and maybe what coaxed Keegan Cook into challenging that, was the indecision by the line judge. It was initially signaled in and then sort of looped back to an out call. Right. And I think that's what prompted his very quick decision to challenge that. Look at the line judge, middle top of your screen. He calls in, and then out. No, we don't see the signal there as they're trying to look at the contact where it touched the floor. But Dixon Chun is taking an awfully long peek at this. This is too long. And he's going to call a touch. A touch. Now, that is allowed. You can challenge the in out, but it's calling in or out. That is allowed if. Oh, OK. Keegan was asking for a touch, not the in-out call. Either way, that is allowed. You can challenge the in and out, and if the official sees a touch, they can still reverse the call, reverse the point. So either, whatever the focus was, Dixon Chun obviously was paying attention to whether or not there was a touch there. And exactly. And an interesting reversal as UW strikes first. I don't think they'll replay that one. That's a point any way you slice it. Apologies to, apologies to, apologies to Dixon Chun. I thought it was only the yeah. only challenge uh, what you asked for. Just in that instance. But Keegan Cook actually telling us, giving us a little nonverbal communication, saying that he did challenge. He asked for the he touch. Asked for touch, yeah. Well, it may take a long time. But I think ultimately the fans, the coaches, the players, yeah. they want to see right. the call, as you said, made correctly. Hoffman down the line and in. 
That one was awfully close as well. It's a point for the Huskies. Missed opportunity there for Hawaii, not putting that ball down, putting it into open court area. Drexel with the serve. Good pass there by Helvig. Middle set Williams. And that one dug up by McPherson. Hoffman, the fingertips of the block out of piece. So Troy, high and away. Van Sickle off the block and out. She tooled it. And Hawaii up one. I think Brooke is ready to break out of her little mini slump that she had from the first part of last night. And tonight she's hitting negative for tonight. I mean, she was up until uh, that swing. Now she's flatlining it at 0 0 0. Had 12 kills at 440 in her Rainbow Wahine debut against San Diego. Also had four blocks, two of which were solo. Last night, five kills hit 042. So it has sort of tempered a bit for her since night one. Bajima dug up over the net by Wagner. Outside, Hoffman. She is smoking the ball right now. Hoffman brings the thunder, doesn't she? And to think that she didn't play until the 20th match last year. Mom participated in track at the University of Oregon. Her dad, Gary, actually played for a time in the NFL. Here's Helvey. Dug up over the net. She'll get another swing at it and then just places it down the line and in. Now that was a nice shot placed into the open area. Helvey could see where the open area was and she just tapped it down. Four serving three. You'll see a good serve, but a better pass. Step out goes to Sanders. We haven't heard much from Sanders. That's because the passing hasn't been what they would like it to have been. When their passing is good and they're in system, center is as good as anybody. Although, Keegan Crick was telling me their, their slide work needs is still a little bit immature right now. He'd like to see it evolve a little bit faster, certainly get better before Pac-12 league play. Sanders had nine kills, hit 727 in the opener against St. John's. So you're right, when it's going, it can be very effective. Here's Van Sickle. Showing signs through the blocking down. Hawaii back up one. Notice from Will Libero in the back row, there's a lot of players picking up the ball in the second touch. If the Osea can't get there, we got Ben Sickles got great hands, and we saw Rasmussen's got pretty good hands. And they set a nice ball for the outside hitters. Bajima. Sent it right by that Hawaii block. Yeah, when asked about this system, some of the players through the first couple of nights saying that they just have so much fun playing in a system like this because, as Hannah Helvig put it, we get to do everything. We get to play every aspect of the game for six rotations. Aichidi blocked back and roofed. I like that play, they'll finally run a slide. And something that Hawaii that doesn't normally do with three hitters in the front. The slide isn't always in the mix. And this slide might be a little bit more in its infancy at this stage of the season as well. Here's Helvig. So much for her infancy. The true freshman has become a major component for this Hawaii squad already in this season opening weekend. She's the one who said, I know I'm on a special team because when I was in at Target buying some school stuff, somebody asked for my autograph and wanted to take a picture with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, ace. A couple of symbols of many aces. Ace Ventura. Yes. Thanks for that ID there. Yeah, I just, in case you hadn't seen the movie. <laughs> Here's Bajima. Good touch there on the block. Van Sickle goes back set to Rasmussen. She is like a pitcher where she's able to change speeds and 
and that just seems to botch up the block on so many occasions. Look at the back set from Dan Sickle. Oh, that's pretty. I'd like to see Rasmussen hit that a little harder, though. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of all those roll shots. She's going to get those back stuff back at her if she's not careful. Right side, Bajima. The block wasn't up, but there was enough there. Igidi was late from the middle, but Rasmussen said, no worries, I got this. Solo stuff, Hawaii by three in the fourth. Timeout, Washington. Holy moly, Jolie. Jolie Rasmussen again leading the charge for Hawaii. 16 kills. She's hitting 500 for the match. I just say she's doing it all kinds of ways. Mom and dad watching on. Also has six digs to go along with four blocks and is in on that one. Right on cue. Add another highlight to the reel. Is the Manoa Roofing Company in the house or what? 16 blocks to nine for the Huskies. A lot of people thought it would be the reverse with the Huskies being such a big team and 13th ranked in the country. Instead, tables are turned so far. And maybe among the most pleasant surprises for Hawaii this young season, the blocking numbers as that hit goes wide. And Hawaii with a little bit of separation here. We're getting to the midway point of this fourth stanza. A 6-0 run being put on by the Rainbow Wahine. Marin Grote, sophomore from Burbank, California, now on the floor for Washington. Here is Bajima, block out a piece. IGD able to pop it up herself. Bump set Rasmussen. Down the line, but McPherson was there. A little calamity on the side of UW, so Hawaii on the attack. Oh, but Wagner is stuffed. Grote freshly inserted into the match. What a block by Grote, one on one. Fab 50 recruit out of high school. John Burroughs High School in Burbank. Number 20 recruit in the country in her senior year. What yep. an insertion by Keegan Cook. Yeah, he's pulling, wow. he's pulling the strings in a pretty precise way here as far as the substitutions go. That was immediate impact there by Marin Grote. Seven serving 11, and it's Bajima. Rasmussen, the touch. Diving save there by Powell. Drexel from off the net. Right there is Yosia. So Van Sickle sets up Rasmussen. She tried to put a little more emphasis on it, but the block was up. Nice next to Drexel. They've done some damage together. That's said a little bit too tight. I think Brooke might have been better off going to the right side where she had Wagner. So it's eight serving 11. You'll see it. Goes high and away. Rasmussen. What a dig there by McPherson. Outside Hoffman. And again, able to all but throw it down to the floor. And that's that, three straight points by you. by McPherson? The match. She has got one great. Timeout, Hawaii. Set force tight. Welcome back. We got more Rainbow Wahine volleyball for you next week. The Rainbow Wahine Invitational, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, featuring Army, Sacramento State, and Denver. And don't forget about Rainbow Warrior football against Oregon State. Saturday, September 7th, live on Spectrum Sports pay-per-view. Out of the timeout, Amber Igidi flattened that one out a bit. It sails just long. That's four straight points by UW, and they are right back in the rearview mirror. Parvis with great serving, Parvis with great defense, and Parvis Hawaii's self-inflicted wounds. Hawaii out of system here, and it's going to be a freebie sent over the net. Middle set, that's Nice. And the Huskies have stormed back. The seventh tie of this fourth set. Very important for Hawaii to get a good pass and get back into some rhythm. That separation we mentioned has vanished. Here's Rasmussen going high hands, dug up by Bajima. She gets the set from the back row and sends it wide. So Hawaii gets out of a sticky rotation. 
And now Bailey Joy and Sky Williams will re-enter the contest. Huskies putting up a dog fight. Oh, I get it. <laughs> D-A-W-G fight. Dog fight. Crowd quiets as Choi sends it over. Great serve. Free ball coming for Hawaii. Big opportunity here. They go middle to Williams. Dug up by Bajima. Outside, Hoffman. And a net violation against Hawaii. Okay, Sky Williams got tangled up in that a little bit. Hawaii missed opportunity in a free ball there. Did not score. They need to be better in transition if they're going to hold off these Huskies. So here is McPherson with the serve. Tied at 12. Outside Rasmussen off the block and down. That was a great pass by Helby. A great set by Choi. And an equally good attack by Rasmussen. That's the kind of play Choi is going to beat a team like the number 13 team in the country. They've got to play that smoothly. And have three good contacts on serve receive. Wagner with the serve down the line. It's Drexel handling it. Middle set, and that one pounded down by Lauren Sanders. These two teams have a history. This is the first trip to the islands for the Huskies indoor volleyball program since 2016. Hawaii has been sent to Seattle four different times in the NCAA tournament since 2010. In 2010, 12, 14, and 17. And three of those four years, Washington knocked them out of the tournament, effectively ending their season as Brooke Van Sickle climbs the ladder. She's getting hot. Three kills in her last three tries. UW has won the last four meetings, including in this building back in 2016 when Washington was ranked sixth in the country. Slide goes to Sanders. The dink sniffed out by Van Sickle. Outside, it's Helvig cross court. What a layout saved by McPherson. From off the net, Hoffman into the twine. And Hawaii gets the 15 first. That's Hoffman's first miss of the night. She is human. 10 kills, one error in 15 tries. She's been almost perfect. Rasmussen the serve down the line. Forces the overpass. Helvig can't get it down. Hoffman from off the net loops it across. Choi outside. Van Sickle up the ladder. Chase down on the second touch by Bajima. Free ball coming for Hawaii. Middle to Williams. Popped up in the air by McPherson. Another scramble play by Washington. Hoffman is dug up. Over the net and down. The old dig kill. kill. <laughs> the old dig kill. And that forces the Huskies to call timeout. Jolie Rasmussen with the up and over. And it's Hawaii by three, timeout Huskies. I mean, to think that after all of the volleyball that this team has played the previous two nights, they are still playing with this level of energy. The crowd obviously deserves some credit for that, uh, but to have gotten even to this point, I think, is worthy of note. I, I would totally agree, you know, and a lot of people would have thought that this team you know, would come out and, and play flat, play tired, maybe get cramps. I mean, who knows? But they, they have performed well beyond most people's expectations up to this point. Shocked right. everybody by those first two sentences. That's right. Victories for sure. Maybe even themselves a little bit. Let's send it over to Ryan. Hey, thanks, Gwenoa. Well, one of the beauties of Hawaii's new lineup in this unconventional four-hitter system is that they are able to move their outside hitters because they will always have the left and right side hitters. Hawaii coaching staff in each rotation trying to decide possible matchups by moving their outside blockers from the right to the left. We're seeing Rasmussen block on the right and then in the next play going over to the left. That's one of the advantages is that they are able to match up their players based on their outside hitters of the opposing team. 
for Washington. They're trying to find a way to slow down Rasmussen, saying we cannot allow her to get kills on her half-speed roll shots. They want their blockers to be much more aggressive with their hand positioning. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Good insight there. We've had three straight nights of some lively crowds. They have been flexing their muscle. <laughs> Out of the timeout, 16 serving 13. Hoffman sends it long. Was there a touch? No touch. Point Hawaii, they're up four. Watching this pass is getting pulled off the net. The center's pull, pulling off the net. It's about the 10 or 11 foot line. So no middle attack. Hawaii's blockers been able to get to the outside waiting. Like Hoffman. That. Guy just a little shuffle step to the outside. Nothing fancy. No turn and run. No swing block. Just shuffle over and go straight up and press over. That is the ninth block of the evening for Sky Williams. Back row set. Badjamo sends it long. Hawaii up six. It was. 13-13 here in the fourth. Hawaii has ripped off six straight. Rasmussen continues to get the serves in. Outside, Hoffman blocked again. Bajimo will set up Hoffman from off the net. That's dug up in the back row by Rasmussen. Outside, Van Sickle up the ladder, hand down the shoot. And Hawaii gets to the 20-point plateau. Keegan Cook, meanwhile, retrieves the replay challenge guard. And he's gonna, he's gonna challenge something on that play. The crowd, as expected, not into the idea. Maybe challenging a net violation. Blocker into the net, possibly. Either way, no timeouts left. He may have needed to challenge this just to stop the action, Hawaii was on a roll. No block, no. Even though the net bounced there, it was because the ball mm -hmm. was on the cable there, not because any blocker touched the net. It would be funny if you go through the, this, ro this rotation of uh, reviews here and they find out the Washington net. All right, so we're taking it from the serve here. You see this outside Hoffman with the swing, and that would be where the net, if at all, took place. But it was the ball that hit the net. Certainly not sure there's enough there to conclusively make a call. It is currently 20 to 13 in favor of Hawaii. The Rainbow Wahine looking to go to 3-0 for the first time since 2015. They started that year 5-0. I'm not sure you can see anything via that angle. You can see where, that's, you can see where the ball, I believe, hits that. That's what made the net balance, not any blocker. The ball hits the net right there yeah. and makes it bounce, not the, any player. Yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a call to make here with these angles under these circumstances. And the Jeopardy music comes on once again. Yeah, they're looping it now. We've gotten through a whole episode of Jeopardy, I think, by now. No net violation. And the play stands. But for Keegan Cook, that is the pausing of the action. A longer timeout than he would have had if he used 
exactly. So 20 serving 13. Looking for this serve to Boeing. Let's see if Rasmussen can do that. She does. Good pass, though. Step out. Sanders is blocked back. Another scramble play for the Huskies. Here's Hoffman the swing. Block out a good piece. Rasmussen digs it up. Choi outside to Van Sickle. Dug up over the net by McPherson. Van Sickle back at it. Can't put it down. Back row set goes to Badjama. And she short arms it. And the roll continues here for Hawaii. Rare miss that time. Powell, she rarely misses her sets. That time I don't think Badjama was ready for that pipe set out of the back row. And eight one here for the Rainbow. Opportunity knocking. Side, Hoffman. I got by Choi. Bump sets it to the back row. Rasmussen swing, and that's picked up by Badjama from the back row. Right there is Choi. Here's Helvig from off the net. Badjama again would be up. Outside, Hoffman off the block and out. Applying the tourniquet there to stop that Rainbow Wahine run. Both teams playing a little conservative there, just keeping the ball in play. Boy, can be a little more aggressive on their swings with this kind of a lead. Oh, the crowd getting behind them. They can feel some excitement here. Outside, Helvig misses the floor wide, tried to take the line. But another point for Washington. And Robin Amo is going to challenge that in out call. I think she's challenging the touch on the block. That is confirmed, yes. So Dixon Chun will take a look at a touch here off the block. And we have said it many times, this is the most difficult replay. Yes. The touch or no touch to verify. Ooh, hmm. was there a little finger there? You know, was there a picky movement? I don't know. You stare at these shots and these freeze frames <laughs> close enough, and your eyes start to play tricks on you. But yeah, it looks like there may be a touch there yes. on that pinky finger. Yes. There's only two players and only two people in the entire arena who really know, and that's Helvig. That's right. And LMA Powell. There oh, looks, yeah, there's that. It looks like move. there's a little finger waggle. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. Like you said, the resolution isn't quite what we'd like it to be, but. Man, this may be the toughest one of the entire evening for Dixon Chun. But another pause in the action. Who does this benefit more, you think? Does this benefit Hawaii in some way, even yes. if Washington still gets the point? Yes. Washington, you know, oh, there was the movement right there, I thought. <laughs> what do you think? Are we seeing things now? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. Dixon John didn't see anything. I, th I think it benefits Hawaii just because Washington was on, you know, on a mini roll of one point anyway. They got a side out, then they got a, another point. Hawaii still up six. Hoffman to serve. Good. Oh, the pass by Rasmussen actually off the mark. She'll get the set from the back row. And lays the smack down. Boy, Hawaii really got lucky there. Poor pass. A decent set to a back row player, but Washington waiting there with three blockers up, and somehow Rasmussen finds a way to find the floor. Her 19th kill of the night, hitting 432. 22, serving 15. Mourinho Sia with the serve. Bajima, the first touch, gets the set. And she's roofed. Igini next to Helvi. That's now 18 blocks on the night for the Rainbow Wahine. You know who's happy? Angelica Inquist, the blocking coach. They've had a marvelous weekend of blocking. I'm telling you, 15 the first night, 12 the next, 18 tonight. Outside, Bajima. A good chunk taken out of that swing by the block. Here's Van Sickle, roll shot, Bajima right there. Step out goes to Sanders, hits it long. Was there a touch? 
No touch. Point for Hawaii. And it is Aloha Bowl for the match. It is Aloha Bowl for the Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic Championship. see a sense in long, maybe a little too pumped up there with the crowd at its feet. I think there is a little extra adrenaline. What do you think? It remains Aloha Bowl. Hawaii seeking its 12th title. So Hawaii has eight chances at match point. What you do you think? You couldn't ask for more. That's for sure. Well, they had nine. They had Yosias right there. Bogomolova with the serve. You'll see it. They go to Van Sickle, and she puts it down, and it's over. The Rainbow Wahine have tamed the Huskies, and they claim the title in the Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic. Amazing. That's all I can say. It was simply amazing. A team that was absolutely exhausted, physically, emotionally, spiritually, they somehow found a way to dig down deep and secure this victory tonight. Just amazing. It's courage, heart, you name it, they had it. They played 14 sets this weekend. And along the way, they put the rest of the volleyball nation on notice. This Rainbow Wahine team is something to behold right now. They're the real deal. They are the real deal. Credit Robin Amoa and Angelica Inquist and Khalil Baxter for putting together a great game plan, number one. Number two, being creative enough to get really funky with the lineup and having confidence in it and instilling in the players the same confidence. Not one, but two victories this weekend over nationally ranked opponents. Hawaii is 3-0 and for the first time since 2015. Scott Robbs is with Robin Amor. Okay, thanks a lot. Come on, Coach. Last night you played almost three hours. The night before, uh, a five-setter. How'd you guys do it tonight? They followed directions. <laughs> they followed directions. They followed the game plan. We got to serve tough. That's a great team on the other side. They're huge, you know. We got to get them out of system. That's what we needed to do. We did it at the service line. And our, our blockers are finally block some balls tonight, which is awesome. They're for the win. Hey, you knocked off two nationally ranked teams in the first weekend of the opening of, of the volleyball season. What's that mean for you about your team? I mean, I don't know about the rankings. I, for me, I've never ever since I played volleyball, never thought about rankings. But it does feel great to like not be ranked and beat ranked teams. I you know going into our season, and you know, getting all the way to the end, it helps them to play, you know, Pac-12 teams or better teams in our conference. Nine newcomers on this year's team. What'd you learn about your team this weekend? I love them. Nah, they're great girls and they're, they have to gel, like I said, you know, there's a lot of people like, oh, you got a lot of weapons, this and that. I'm like, they still have to gel. So they're still, you know, we're not there yet. They did awesome tonight though, props to them. And props to you, congratulations. Oh, I don't know about me. Okay, thank you. By the way, Kanoa Robbins said, we finally won a tournament. And yes, they did. <laughs> and yes, they did. She talked about how everyone was describing all the talent on this team. Well, this weekend, they turned that talk into action. And they claim the Rainbow Wahine Classic title. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match. Car of Bajima, 14 kills, two blocks, five digs, two service aces. And Jolie Rasmussen certainly in the running for the tournament MVP. 19 kills, hit 432 tonight. A double-double performance with 10 digs, five blocks, and a service ace. So Hawaii 3-0. They knock off the number 21 ranked team in the country in San Diego on night one. They take down the 13th ranked team in the country in UW tonight. C-Mac, how legit, how significant was this? Very significant. Very significant, Kanoa. And these are two good teams they beat. And they beat a very good St. John's team, too. That's a St. John's team that people are going to hear from. They're going to win a lot of matches this year. Uh, to be honest with you, I was really surprised that, that uh, they played as well as they did this early in the year. I thought maybe by next weekend, those nine new players would be gelling, as Rob Amo said. But they are gelling right now, and it's really fun to watch. Yeah, the fresh faces have given a fresh level of hope here to the Rainbow Wahine fans. And it is incumbent 
to come down and check this team out because as you said, I'll use your words, they are for real. Stick around for the Heineken post-game show. It's coming up. Our corner crew is going to break down all of tonight's highlights and statistics, get you some interviews. The fruits of their labor. It's hardware time for the Rainbow Wahine as they get to collect the trophies for another Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic title. That's it for us. We'll see you next week. For Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Aloha from the Stan Sheriff Center. Highlights Hawaii and Washington. We start off with the All-American for the Huskies, Kara Babjama, came away with 14 kills, but also committed 14 errors, hitting zero for the Huskies. But she's a big hammer from the outside, no question. On the Hawaii side, the freshman, Amber Igidi out of Louisiana. She was terrific. She put down four kills, but it wasn't really her offense as much as her defense in on nine roofs. And also on the outside, Jolie Rasmussen, MVP of the tournament, and why not? She led all team, all, everybody with 19 kills. She hit 432 on the night, the pace of Rainbow Wahine. And in the middle, the veteran, Skylar Williams, known for her defense. There you see some of her kills and her blocks, nine blocks. She also had six kills, hit 357, and blocking. Get the, there's a, there's a theme there. Hawaii's blocking all weekend was great, and even exceptional tonight, Hawaii with 18 blocks against one of the better teams in the country in Washington as everybody got involved on the roof party as Hawaii claims the championship in four over number 13, Washington. From Spectrum Sports, it's the Heineken Post Game Show. Hi everybody, thanks for sticking around. It's a festive atmosphere here in the Stan Sheriff Center as Hawaii claims the Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic in four over number 13, Washington. And you know, so much was being made about the fact Hawaii had played five sets the last two nights, last night almost three hours. Hawaii didn't look tired at all. They looked far from tired. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that just goes to show the tenacity of this team, how motivated they were with three players transferring out of the Pac-12, helping Hawaii gain this title. If you will, last year there was no tournament. Just a reminder, it was canceled. This year they come out and they dominate their own tournament. Yeah, and again, Hawaii doing it the non-traditional way with a lineup that has really become uh, something that I think will work for them with this four-hitter outside hit uh, system, allowing them options offensively and defensively, even in the passing department, having four available passers at all times. Uh, this is a lineup that may be difficult to scout for teams because you can really match up players differently along the net and Hawaii proved to use that to their advantage here tonight. Well, you know, except for that third set, the other three, Hawaii won really handily, and, and I think a lot of it had to do with their serving. They didn't have a whole lot of aces. They had five service aces, but they, they coughed up a lot of bad pass received by Washington. Yeah, and a lot of times, Washington were forced to go to the high ball set outside. Bajma had her way for somewhat part of the night, but Hawaii's block really got in the way. Uh, those, these blocking numbers, 18 blocks, against a Pac-12 ranked team is insane. I mean, I don't know the last time Hawaii had this many blocks going into a second weekend. This is gonna be a strength for this team and they can only get better in that category. And the funny part is it's almost like role reversal. Everybody was talking about how big University of Washington, the Huskies were and how strong they were and how they served so tough. And guess what? It just did the hula hula. It totally flipped on them. Hawaii, excellent serving, creating a lot of opportunities, posting a huge blocking night. All right, let's take a look at the final numbers from this very important victory for the University of Hawaii. They're brought to you by Levitt, Yamani, and Soldier, and Hawaii dominates almost in every category. Yeah, and coming into this night, you know, we're talking about how Hawaii has been out dug tonight, actually with two more digs uh, leading in that department as well. But again, the blocking, the number 242, that is a very good hitting percentage for the caliber of team that Washington is. And, and you know, and listening to Coach Keegan Cook talk to his team throughout, you could tell that they were frustrated. I mean, this was an uncharacteristic game by themselves. Uh, they said a lot of it was their own emotions, them making errors, and them not being able to control their side of the net. Uh, so they felt Felt like this maybe wasn't the type of team that they are used to being a representation of but you got to give credit to Hawaii for putting them in that position of playing uh, somewhat stressed out somewhat emotional to the point where they just could not make things work no doubt about it one of the 
uh, biggest wins in this arena in the last four or five years, yeah. I would say, as Hawaii takes it over Washington. Stay with us when we come back. One of the key components of tonight's win, Skylar Williams, will join us here in the corner. Welcome back to the Heineken Post Game Show. Now there's a look at the beautiful Terraflex, which saw a huge win for the Rainbow Wahine tonight over number 13, Washington. Hawaii takes it 25-20, 25-12, 20-25, and 25-16. Hawaii now 3-0 to start 2019. And we talk so much about the newcomers and why not nine of them, five freshmen, four transfers, but there are some veterans that are contributing or more than contributing. Skylar Williams joins us now a junior, right? Are yeah, junior? oh my gosh, finally. <laughs> a junior, I'm so excited. Yeah. You've been on the team the last couple of years. Yeah. And, and by Hawaii standards, maybe not quite at the level most people like, but this year's team looks like it could be special. Talk about what you see now as opposed to the last couple of years. Um, I don't want to say that the team didn't have this last year. I'm just seeing it more. Uh, we talk about having, we all have motivation. We all have passion. We're all working together as a team. We're all communicating even more. Even that, if that's just saying a color, saying something on the court just helps. So I feel like we all have one main goal and we all know what we want to do to achieve that goal. And that's have to fight, communicate and have passion. So. Talk, talk about tonight's win. What does that mean for you guys? Ooh, tonight's win means that we're just going up, up, up. We're just going to keep going, try to get to the win that natty, and we're going to do everything that we can. So that means working hard in the gym, work eating right. God, I know, finally we're eating right. And that means, like, weightlifting, taking everything we do, taking that extra inch to win. So when Scott interviewed Coach Robin in the, <laughs> just recently, right after the match, he asked what the difference tonight was, and she said they actually listened. <laughs> <laughs> I knew she would say that. So what, I knew it. What, what was she telling you? What were you guys listening um, to? It's as far as um, the sets, like waiting on the blocks, dropping that left hand, dropping that right hand, or uh, staying off the net with the setters, like listening to the little things that have a big impact in the game. You know, this year we're seeing a different sort of lineup for you folks running this new system where you actually come in with a setter. And so now we're seeing you uh, running with two different setters, you primarily with one because you come in together. But how has that adjustment been made now um, that you now are essentially working with two different setters? Is there a change up? Uh, is there a difference in the way that the setting style is or with the offense as a whole? Um, I don't think there's much of a difference because uh Again, since we have like we all get subbed out and we are with different setters, we work even harder to make sure we have a connection. Eye contact. I, I know it's not it's not gonna seem like a lot, but eye contact, that physical touch. I need this. Okay, you need me to do this, I got it. Having that more connection communication to help the offense knowing that different setters and different hitters are coming in. I thought it was, there was a good sign about this year's squad when Robin said that when you guys started practice, the very first day she walked in, she didn't have to tell you guys to get up. You guys already had developed a sweat and were already working yeah. out without her. Was that you guys, the veterans that knew what to expect and in, in letting everybody know, hey, we need to do this? Yeah, um, we just knew that we want a different culture in the gym. We all want to win. So that means we got to come in and ready. As soon as we walk in the gym, change that mindset that we are here to practice. We're working to win the Natty. That's, yeah. We're going to win. Coach Robin talked about your strengths and your growth and your development earlier in the preseason in an interview. Would you say that you're a lot stronger, more physically? You look a lot yeah, stronger on the yeah, court. Yeah, I feel like uh, like physically a lot more stronger and mentally I had to work on my game to better the team. So I had to like watch way more. I didn't watch watch film I didn't watch I said it I said it could drop I said it <laughs> so I didn't really watch film and I had to learn how to pick up stuff way quicker way to adjust so not only my phys like physical like getting stronger in the gym but as far as like mentally stronger as well on the court looking ahead obviously you guys don't have a whole lot of time to turn this around you guys will be back here on Thursday uh, how do you think the physical you know aspect of that is you guys played three really grueling yeah. matches here now coming back on Thursday uh, you guys gonna be up for it yeah uh, we better be up for it so uh, we're gonna rest we're gonna eat right make sure we do everything that we can again the extra mile we all want to win so that means we have to do everything inside and outside the gym to make sure our bodies are well rested treatment ice all of that to make sure 
when we come in and practice on Tuesday, it's go time. Now we're thinking about the next teams coming in. All right, one last question. We've got to ask you about the nails. Tell us the <laughs> background, because you said before we came on, we know, but yeah. tell us what's up so, with the nails. So, uh, along two weeks of double days, so we said, hey, team, we worked hard. We deserve this. We are going to get a Manny Petty, because we're all going to go together, and we're going to go down to, I don't even know where we went, to get our nails done to make sure a little self-care, a little calm down, and also to look good on the court. No, I'm just kidding, but <laughs> self-care. Yeah, Lisa Ryan and I are going to do that tomorrow. Yeah. Team Bond, yeah. Day. So team make bonding. sure you tune in on Thursday and see how our manicures and pedicures look. Uh, I don't okay. know if I'll go with the hot pink, but maybe oh. <laughs> I'll let Lisa decide on that. Hey, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome job, not only tonight, but this weekend. Let's keep it going. Oh, thank you, guys. All right, Skylar Williams, our very special guest here in the corner. We'll come back, have some final thoughts, and wrap things up.